There's a photo. Oh, that. Aww, look at cute little Machias there. He looks like he had such a sweet disposition. Yeah, before he grew up to be a stubborn old nag. Stop nitpicking people's old family photos! <laughs> Honestly. The governor looks the same as ever, though. Is that woman next to him your older sister or something? Close enough. She was a cousin on my father's side of the family. Since she lived quite close, she often came to visit. Now her family was just my father and I, so having her around was a big help. The way you speak about her seems to imply you no longer see her. Did she get married and move away? She died. Around six years ago. Oh. I see. And that has something to do with why you hate the nobility, right? <laughs> hmm. So... I never really planned on telling anyone about this. But considering all we've been through, I suppose it's time I told you a little more about me. It's a long story, but... Would you hear me out? Uh, of course! Hmm. Absolutely. Glad to. Thanks. Sis was nine years my senior. Beautiful. Kind. To me, she was in every sense the ideal woman. Now, as I said earlier, we're a family of commoners through and through. But my father proved to be a very capable government official. And eventually, he was promoted to an important government position, where he started to make a name for himself. Honesty and integrity are a core part of his work ethic. So, of course, he made his fair share of enemies. But after seeing success in a number of major projects, he gained a reputation both inside and outside the government. My mother died when I was still young. But Sis happened to live around here and ended up helping us in more ways than I can count. Since she was his niece, my father always made a fuss over her. And even though she didn't live in the same house, she was like a real sister to me, a real daughter to my father. I was always so proud of her. As a child, she was practically my idol. And as you'd expect, she had countless admirers among the men of the city. But for all her popularity, she was always level-headed and sensible. So I never felt I had anything to worry about. Until he appeared. He was one of my father's subordinates at City Hall. Though unlike him, he was a noble by birth. A man of high rank, too. The heir of a count. However, he had none of the arrogance or haughtiness one usually associates with the nobility. When I met him myself, he came across as an honest and loyal man. He met Sis when Dad introduced him to her one day. And eventually, the two of them fell in love and began a relationship, despite the difference in their social status. As a child, I was frustrated beyond words. But even I had to admit that the two of them made a good couple. And Sis seemed so happy when she was with him that I had no choice but to let it go and accept their relationship. Time went on and they became engaged, with Dad acting as the go-between. And that's when everything started to fall apart. His family couldn't have been more blatant in their attempts to undermine the relationship. Apparently, one of the four great houses, House Cayenne, proposed an arranged marriage on short notice. And the Count's family were up in arms at the thought he might choose to take a mere commoner as his wife. Since my father held an important post, they were limited in how shamelessly they could try to sabotage the marriage. They began to harass and threaten her in secret every way they could think of. They made her life a living hell. Maybe she didn't want to cause trouble for the man she loved, or 
Perhaps she did it out of consideration for my father. But all that time, she chose to endure it alone. She never discussed it or asked for help. And finally, it became so crushing that she took her own life. It was only afterward that my father and I learned what had really happened. It seems that at the very last, he had chosen to betray her love for him. But I told her, he said. I told her I'd treasure her as my mistress instead if she'd just accept that we couldn't be married. I... I just don't understand it. Why would she take her own life? After that, my father seemed to redouble his efforts. It was like watching a machine kick into high gear. With the help of his ally, Chancellor Osborne, he was able to wrest control of City Hall from the noble faction. Then, four years ago, he was appointed to his current position as governor of Heimdall. And that's how the Regnitz family came to be where it is. I don't even know what to say. So that's why you started hating nobles? Yeah. I was so furious at Sis's death. My hatred needed to be directed at someone. Anyone. First I blamed her fiancé, then his family, and the family of the Duke who tried to intervene. In the end, I just hated the nobility as a whole. The people, their culture, the entire idea of social classes. I desperately wanted the strength to win against them. To show how right I was. How wrong they were. But deep down, I knew the truth about my hate. I knew I was taking out my anger on people who didn't deserve it. People who had done nothing wrong. You... did? <laughs> they may be from different social classes, but people are still individuals. Sis's fiancé was faithful to her. He just wasn't strong enough to shield her from all that ugliness, despite his love. And the Count and his family were only acting in their best interests, which is to be expected, really. Ultimately, I've had to acknowledge that not all commoners are good people, and... Not all nobles are unworthy of respect. Eusis might not have done much to change my opinion. But getting to know you two showed me that there are nobles who live up to that name. Machias. I have no idea how my father feels about all of this. But this is how I've come to feel. I see. You have my thanks. I'm glad you felt you could talk to us about it. <laughs> Still, I don't think it hurt to be a bit more honest with yourself. If you're willing to admit all of that, maybe you can find it in you to be friends with Eusis, too. Are you kidding me? I might accept that not all nobles are bad, but that arrogant, self-centered fool can go choke on a palm. Always mocking me for spending so much time studying or telling me I need to get out more. I don't think he goes quite that far. Besides, I don't think he does it on purpose. He doesn't mean any harm. That's the most irritating part! He does it without thinking! <sighs> well, that was a good coffee break, wouldn't you say?
Okay, let's give this a try. I'll do what I can. That came out rather well. Mm, okay. This one's my specialty. It'll... Mm, okay. This one's my special. All right, I'll give it a try. Let's never speak of this again.
So the tiara really was in there, huh? Now I'm wondering if the last passenger who stepped off the tram was Phantom Thief B himself. I don't remember there being any unusual passengers on board, though. I see. So you have no idea who Phantom Thief B could have been, then? To have done so much and yet left no trace of his presence. You must truly be a master at covering his tracks. I'll say, but hey, at least we were able to get the tiara back. I suppose that's good enough. What's wrong, Reen? Well, why are you staring at me like that? I think it's time we put an end to this little charade. Don't you, Baron Blue Blanc? Or should I call you Phantom Thief B? What? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this, this savory taste is why the unripe fruit is the most delectable of all. Wait, aren't you the Baron we met earlier? But that mask... That's the mask of Phantom Thief B. Allow me to introduce myself once again. I am Phantom Thief Blue Blanc, otherwise known simply as Phantom Thief B. Baron Blue Blanc is but one of the many roles I have assumed during my pursuits. Incidentally, might I ask when you first discovered my true identity? It didn't really take much discovering. You went out of your way to show up in the Crystal Garden after all. Now, maybe it's just me, but it hard to believe you were seriously trying to hide your identity to begin with. Your disguises? Nothing short of perfect, I have to admit. But with all the work you've put into this, I suspected you might come check on us near the end of your little game. Ha <laughs> ha! I see! Excellent deductive reasoning! Simply splendid! Why would you do something like this? Why go to all the trouble? Ah, oh, does that interest you? Must there be a motive? Nah, now that we know your identity, there's nothing more to discuss. Theft is a crime. Indeed, a crime we will not allow to go unpunished. Oh, what spirited youths you are! did he do that? <laughs> Just a little trick I like to keep up my sleeve. Regardless, you have provided me with plenty of sport and more than enough entertainment for one day. I'll be watching your future achievements with keen interest. Ladies and gentlemen, until we meet again, I bid you adieu. He disappeared again. <laughs> That's quite a little trick. You might still be nearby. Let's search the area. <laughs> <laughs>